when I was in the service many years ago, one of the things that I got to do, I don't recall who was official duty, but I did it a lot. I would go down to the courthouse for some kind of flag ceremony. I was an honor guardsman. And uh, participate in the naturalization ceremonies for new U.S. citizens. These were amazing experiences. I mean, they just tug at your heartstrings, especially when you're a troop and you're wearing the uniform. And the judges that were performing the oath of allegiance for these new U.S. citizens and the emotions, the, the happiness, the excitement for new U.S. citizens, the feeling in the room for these people and their families, it was, uh, they're, they're just amazing moments that most U.S. citizens don't ever witness. This is something I recommend all U.S. citizens do because it'll, it'll make you appreciate a little bit more some of the things and the difficulties that people have to become U.S. citizens and something that existing U.S. citizens sometimes take for granted. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Rojo Reads News. I'm your host, Paul. Today's article uh, comes from the Miami Herald. This is something that uh, I perused through. I haven't read the whole thing yet. I'm going to read it with you. But thousands of immigrants were on the verge of becoming U.S. citizens. Then the pandemic struck. This is by Lautoro Greenspan. With his mother in deportation proceedings, the sooner that Luis, an immigrant from Venezuela, finishes the process of becoming a U.S. citizen, the better. Naturalization, the family's immigration lawyer said, would allow Luis to petition for his mother to receive a green card and remain legally in Miami. Until recently, things were on track. Luis had filed his 20-page application form back in December, the earliest he was able to under current law. Asked for successfully moving past the next step in the naturalization process, a criminal background check, Luis was given an early April appointment for his citizenship interview. But then the coronavirus pandemic struck, shuttering the offices of the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, the federal agency that administers the country's lawful immigration system. Luis's interview, as well as other in-person services at USCIS, including naturalization oath ceremonies, were deferred until further notice. It's very frustrating and very worrying. This process costs a lot of money, and it's something that you look forward to for a very long time. It makes you wish for there to be some other way for my interview to take place, maybe online, said Luis, who declined to disclose his last name because of his relative's immigration status. But that's the way it is, he added. We are, we are at the mercy of the immigration agencies, and we can't do anything about it. They do what they do, and if you like it, good. If you don't like it, then too bad. Yeah, I, I have met many people in my life who have gone through this process and come out on the other end U.S. citizens, and um, I'm very aware of the hardships involved going through this process. I don't think most people are. Immigration lawyers and nonprofit service providers say that the suspension of the in-person naturalization services, which is set to last at least until June 4th, has meant more instability for immigrant families during a time of crisis. Naturalization can make a big difference in folks' lives, said Vanessa Joseph, an immigration lawyer at Catholic Legal Services, with a focus on citizenship. We're in the middle of an economic downturn. Maybe there are good maybe there are job openings in the government, but you can't get those jobs if you're not a citizen. Maybe there are some scholarships or financial aid benefits that your family could take advantage of, but you're not a US citizen, so you don't qualify. The longer the naturalization suspension goes on for, the more likely it is that families will permanently lose out on some of the benefits that citizenship bestows. Kids under 18 become citizens automatically if they are lawful permanent residents and their parents naturalize. But if your kids age out and have they have to do the application later on their own. I have a client who's concerned because one of his kids is turning 18 over the summer, so he's watching the clock. It's a big worry. Many are stuck in a similar kind of limbo. According to Boundless Immigration, a company that helps immigrants obtain green cards and citizenship, more than 125,000 would-be new Americans were fully vetted by the U.S. government and approved for citizenship when USCIS offices shut down. The last step in the naturalization process, the oath ceremony, suddenly slipped out of reach. It's a nice ceremony and they give you your flag, but it's not really essential, said Santana. A prolonged wait to clinch citizenship also imperils immigrants' voting rights. With each additional day that USCIS offices remain closed, according to another boundless immigration estimate, an additional 2,100 potential new voters run out of time to be eligible to cast a ballot in the presidential election. 
politics aside and the election aside, uh, there's a point to be made here. You know, this immigration attorney Santana says that the ceremony where they give you the flag that I attended when I was in the service myself and saw many people go through this this ceremony is not needed. It is a ceremony. And they raise their right hand, they give the oath of, of, of uh, allegiance, and they hug and they kiss and they give flowers. Everyone dresses up really nice for it, and they all go out for a steak dinner afterwards. It's, it's a ceremony. I mean, there's got to be some other way we can process these folks online without the ceremony the cer- even though the ceremony is a wonderful experience I, and I really hope that every new US citizen has the opportunity to feel that pride of going in there and raising your hand and taking that oath but it is not essential and in times like this maybe it's something we should put on the back burner what you don't want is there to be a situation where somebody who very well could have been ready to go in March cannot vote in August in Florida's primary election all because of the backlog and delays and the uncertainty, said Joseph. We need to rethink these oath ceremonies and how we do them. The pressing need many immigrants have for speedy naturalization, combined with the science that shows a markedly increased risk of virus transmission in public indoor spaces, has sparked a push for virtual oath ceremonies. In the House, a group of Democratic lawmakers is advocating for virtual naturalization ceremonies to be greenlit as part of the next coronavirus relief package. We are really advocating for virtual oath ceremonies because it's not fair for folks who have been in the process for years to have their dreams deferred because of this pandemic when the Supreme Court is able to do oral arguments over the phone and people are able to get married on Zoom. It's a good point. You should still be able to become a citizen using technology as well. Santana, the Miami immigration lawyer, agreed. I understand the USCS desire to want to meet people in person for the citizenship interview because there are so many security issues and we need to make sure that we are letting the right people become citizens. But for the actual oath ceremony, at the point the person has has been cleared, we know they don't represent any sort of danger, so I don't see why we wouldn't be able to do it virtually. In response, USCIS has indicated that there are legal and logistical considerations that make the virtual administration of naturalization oaths impossible. In a statement, a USCIS spokesperson also told the Miami Herald that in certain limited circumstances, USCIS is conducting small in-person naturalization ceremonies prior to reopening our offices to the public where proper social distancing precautions are ensured. So they're still doing it, it looks like. On May 12th, six immigrants were sworn in as U.S. citizens in an outdoor ceremony in southern Pennsylvania. In Arizona, some have been able to take the naturalization oath in the parking lot of Phoenix's USCIS field office. It's unclear whether outdoor social distancing compliant ceremonies would be feasible in South Florida. I don't see why not. Why wouldn't it? According to the USCIS spokesperson, when offices do reopen, oath ceremonies may be shorter to limit exposure to those in attendance. That's lame. That's lame. They're not even that long to begin with. They're actually very, very short, these these ceremonies. Although USCIS has continued accepting new applications over the course of the pandemic, even as immigrants already in the pipeline remain stuck in the last stages of the process, interest in applying for citizenship has waned. We've seen a significant decrease in the number of people coming to us and saying that they would like to apply, said Joseph, the Catholic League Services. I would say a lot of this is because they aren't able to walk into our office the way they used to, which was, for them, the easiest way to get help. Now the process is on the phone, and that creates extra steps. Also at issue is the $725 filing fee to submit a naturalization application, a price tag that some are balking at in the middle of an economic downturn. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of money to file paperwork. People are concerned that this is not the moment to spend money, said Santana. The same communities disproportionately impacted by the economic crunch brought on by the coronavirus overlap with the groups that drive naturalization in South Florida. You have a lot of people who are working less hours than they previously did. Some folks are just right out of work. So I think there are a lot of people who are going through a number of different things and they are a bit less focused on naturalization because they're trying to figure out where their next meal is going to come from. That is true. you got to feed your families. That seems to be, I mean, for a lot of these people, especially immigrant families, that is a big deal right now. 
In the meantime, the community services that were once widely available at places like public libraries to raise awareness about naturalization, including citizenship classes and information sessions, have reverted to online formats. At first, it was very challenging because we were so reliant on our presence at the libraries, but, but this really forced us to speed up our leveraging of technology, said Francois, from the country's Office of New Americans. We've been trying to adapt to the times. Yeah, I, I think everyone is trying to adapt to the times. And although I don't live in the United States anymore, you can see here I'm, I'm still a patriot and American tried and true. And uh, I, it's one of the amazing things about my country is there's process to citizenship to become an American. And I welcome all new Americans who are going through this process. And again, I hope that someday they can raise their hand and give that oath of allegiance and feel that pride, that pride of becoming a U.S. citizen.